When Smarden received its royal charter, we officially became a town, hence the name Town Barn, and a once obscure village soon developed into an important marketplace in the county. We can see this by looking from the Thames across Kent on this old map, where Smarden is given prominence alongside the county's other main towns. This list of names from the year 1450 gives us some of Smarden's first known shopkeepers, including four butchers, three shoemakers, two bakers, two tailors, one draper, one glover and one barber. Two centuries later, a gate wittily appears on this 1669 token because Sarah Gates had married a Smarden shopkeeper called Thomas Hinckley. Tokens were used to pay suppliers and could be exchanged in his shop for goods. At around the same time, Dr Matthew Hartnup had a chemist shop in his house in Water Lane. He was involved in an alleged cover-up of an outbreak of disease, death and secret burials in 1671, but is remembered for his dedication in helping Smarden's poor. This plan of the village was made in the late 1700s and gives us the names of the shopkeepers along the street at the time. This is the barn at the back of Dragon House. It was a carpenter's shop for many years. Another plan shows the street 50 years later and tells us that the old town barn had once been the village market house. The new road on this plan now goes straight on past Zion instead of turning right at Vesperhawk Lane, as it once used to. This is the original town barn, which burnt down in 1948. Across the road stood the forge. And in this Victorian directory, we see the variety of shop and shopkeepers in Smarden at that time. At one point, there were 19 shops in the parish, mostly in the street, but also at the Bell, near the Flyer, at Jubilee and Mortman's Hill, including at various times petrol stations, taxi services, coach builders, funeral directors and clockmakers. The old post mill had a shop on the road out of the village towards Biddenden. Opposite the tennis court stood Pearson's General Store. Here are his smartly dressed staff. Now let's find out how our post office came into being. Two years after Queen Victoria came to the throne, William Law was appointed as Smarden's first receiving officer. His job was to receive and hold letters until they were collected. Receiving offices had to handle a minimum of a hundred letters a week, so the people of Smarden must have been prolific letter writers. William's father Sam ran the checkers, 
which is where letters would have been delivered. William later took over the White Horse Pub, now Providence House, a scene of murder in 1840, and a few years later he emigrated to the town of Ashford, Connecticut in the United States. William Gurr became the first person to hold the title of postmaster in 1858, probably by then located at his grocer's shop on the corner opposite the Checkers. The Gurr family later had sweet shops at Jubilee House and Baker's Bridge Cottage and carried out carpentry behind Dragon House and elsewhere in the village. In some places letters arrived on horseback, but Smarden's letters were brought on foot by James Barham all the way from Cranbrook. He would set off before dawn and arrived here at 9.30 a.m. He then walked back again to Cranbrook later the same day, carrying letters and parcels from Smarden, a round trip of about 18 miles. He did this journey seven days a week in all weathers. Today, many public footpaths are actually the routes taken by the old-time postman. A few years later, this man, Charles Garland, formed a health care fund for post office workers, which later became Benenden Healthcare Society. In 1837, Lewis Mills, the grandfather of the circus impresario Bertram Mills, arrived in Smarden and later bought Gurr's grocer's shop and with it the post office. Thursday in Smarden was market day, the busiest day of the week so early closing was always Wednesdays. Mill's shop, however, always stayed open, even on bank holidays. The business seemed to thrive as he employed seven servants. He later built what is now the gallery, but was then a general store, remaining so for over a hundred years. His shop sold eight varieties of tea, several types of coffee and sugar, soap, rice, cheese, candles, butter, lard, bacon, currants and raisins in paper bags made in the shop. Gunpowder was sold loose. Paraffin and rope yarn were also on sale, as was a range of medicinal drugs including opium and laudanum, commonly used at the time. Hair oil sold well, as we are told that every boy's hair was oiled on Sunday mornings. The drapery side sold a wide range of haberdashery and hosiery. The store opened every day at 7 in the morning and closed at 8 p.m. weekdays and 10 p.m. on Saturdays. It was lit inside by three candles, one by the door, one by the scales and one on the cheese counter. Soon the post office was offering a saving bank where you could buy stamps for a penny until you had enough to open an account for one shilling. The first money orders were introduced and then postal orders which allowed people to send small amounts of money which the banks would not handle. In 1870s the boom in Christmas cards began despite the fact that in today's money one card cost £36. Smarden still had carriers who would take parcels and loads by cart to either Mason or Ashford two or three times a week. The arrival of the telegraph transformed the way in which people communicated and by 1874 Smarden's post office offered a telegram service operated by the postmistress. The post office telegram service lasted until 2003. Smarden's first post box was the one at the Bell, followed soon after by another box at Mortman's Hill. In the 1880s the first telephones began to appear but did not come to Smarden until the late 1920s or early 1930s. The postmaster operated the switchboard, which basically connected the wire coming from the caller's house 
to another wire going to the receiver's phone. Here are the first telephone numbers for Smarden. There were so few telephones to start with that the numbers had just a single digit. Telephone number 1 was the post office and the highest was number 29. By 1938 there were more telephones in use and the numbers contained three digits. By now the post office number had become 201 and the highest number in the village was 252. Basic instructions on how to use the telephone were needed. Area codes were based on the number on the dialer corresponding to a letter in the name of the town. This photograph from the 1930s shows Pop Marshall's central garage in the street. And this is the Moss Rose Cafe, which was once part of the post office. In 1955, Smarden still had a variety of shops. Here are two views of the grocer's shop at the gallery. With the coming of mobile phones, the old red telephone boxes fell into disuse, but two still remain in the village. It is now more than 180 years since William Law first started receiving letters at the Checkers. The opening of our new post office, cafe and store opens a new chapter in the long and eventful story of Smarden's shops. A story in which each one of us now plays a vital role, shaping a narrative which has yet to be written. We wish the Smarden Community Store a long and successful future.